So, we're going away and, and grinding a lot and doing a lot of plot and coming back later, right? Um, no. We're just gonna do this right now. Oh, okay. Even though we're technically way underleveled for this area. Wow, purple fire and everything. Amazing. These guys aren't fucking around. So, uh, get used to seeing these dancing assholes, because they are the main enemy for, like, 90% of this area. So what can possibly go wrong? Let's find out. Okay, so for starters, we have the Akshas. These are, I believe, the highest tier, or the highest regular tier of these guys, not counting hunts. And, uh, like I said, they have a very high stagger rating, they resist a lot of stuff, and uh, they have War Dance, which is about four or five comboed hits on you, which is really painful. Didn't look that bad. There is it. They're not bad on their own. But they get buddies, and those buddies will start dropping, you know, deep protect and bravery. Okay. I can see how that might get bad. Yeah, I can definitely see how that gets bad. I know, at the very least they have the typical thing about high stagger threshold enemies, is that even by the time you stagger them, they already are taking a whole load of damage. These guys at least have the decency to die quickly, it looks like. Yeah, they're not hard. And honestly, like I said, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty much rolling uh, Relentless Assault way more liberally than I should. But it gets the job done. Huh. Three stars, huh? Right. So, uh, I'm gonna say the bulk of the area is off to the left here, so we're gonna go that way first. So, is this, this whole place just filled with those guys and progressively more bullshit allies? Yep. So, um, I'm gonna say, do you remember from the, uh, the fifth arc? The, uh, Stakinis and the Stakanes? Oh, uh, yeah. The, well, they're back. There were the two of them. And uh, then we also have our good buddy the Akshini, who is the top tier of the um, the deep, the buff and debuff one. Oh, this sounds fun. Yeah. So he, uh, when he does, uh, you know, whatever the dance is. I said, yeah, catastrophic dance. Whenever when he does that, oh no, see now that's a great name for it. Yeah, that is um, that's deep protect God, not deep protect. Ooh, it hits everyone. Yeah. Fun. Well, again, at least he does have the good graces to die respectably quickly. So I guess that could have gone worse. And now you just got some scrub tier guys to deal with. Oh, I don't know, this hasn't been that bad so far. It's... Well, this is the main offender. Okay. Well, I, I don't know, we dealt with the small guys pretty easily. And we dealt with, you know, big versions of this before. How bad can this be? Alright, so the little guys do about 800 over two hits. Um... Yeah! There you go. Okay. That's about 1,200 over a very wide area. I understand how bad this can be. So, and uh, again, they are they are extremely resistant to magic. So, if you want to hit more than one of them at once, you will do about 10% of your usual damage. Cool. At least we have a bunch of people with blitz, right? I don't know, is that actually any effect on these guys? Not really. They're they're just too, they're too small for Saz's splits to do much of anything. So I guess it's just choosing one and focusing on it until it's dead and keeping your guys topped up in the meantime, huh? Yeah. That's you know say really right now, more than anything, I'm just trying to keep everyone alive. And uh Lightning's AI because the because the medic AI is just fucking genius. It is if but it will not use Cura if you have anyone who has green HP. That's real dumb. 
Like, even if Kira, even if you have two other people who are in yellow or red, it will do single cures. That's real dumb. So yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if we've ever actually explicitly pointed this out, but oh god, those guys both just died. Um, but no, no matter what you do, you're only allowed to choose a single target for any given queue of actions. You can't do something sensible like cast two cures on one guy and three cures on another guy. You pick. You choose your menu, you choose your target, and then you choose your five actions that you will do to that target. And if you want to do multiple people, then one of those actions had better be a Ra or a Gar. Because game design. So that's two of those guys. Yeah, that's two of those guys. Yeah, nice try. Yeah, no, we're not going to talk about how many tries this fight took me. I see. That many, huh? Was the stuff at least worth it? Uh, perfect conductors are pretty good, and the rainbow anklet is okay, I guess? I don't remember exactly what it does offhand. Oh, are we gonna have to stealthily look it up? I'm not gonna bother to, you can. Okay then. I, w I will do exactly that. But, you know, while while I do that, you're gonna deal with these guys. Nope, gonna skip that. Was that not really not interesting? No, that was just... again, that was just seeing... it was just... More of the same. Although I will say that this area is fantastic for CP. Oh, I can I can imagine. If it's like an actual high high level area, then I guess that makes sense. Also, that was just there was multiple um, metal armbands, so I don't know why you would need multiple, like, I mean, metal armbands just resist deep attack, so it's not like they're anything special, but I mean, like, getting two of them at once is kind of like, alright, that's interesting, I guess. Yeah, that's, that seems like a weird thing to have done. I don't know. Oh, I see. It protect the rainbow anklet protects against days, or rather, it gives you a resistance to days. Eh. All right, I guess. Yeah, that seems. You know, it's it's again one of one of those things that I kind of grudgingly admit that I like about Final Fantasy XIII on a mechanical level is that it gave us the multiple accessory slots. So that all of these little accessories that, you know, made you immune to one status effect actually had some use beyond being strategically swapped in for one boss battle and otherwise totally forgotten about in favour of accessories that are actually more generally useful. So that's nice. Also, just for what it's worth, as you saw, I mean, we had like 45,000 CP already. Yeah. I, I can see the appeal of this. And hey, that's one of those gates. Mm -hmm. And as we learned from last time, behind that gate is something you probably shouldn't be fighting. That's a, And I'm sure it will be as to absolutely no surprise that I went and fought in it. Anyway. Cool. How'd that go for you? Really easy, actually. He, I got him on my first try. Oh. Well, that's anticlimactic. There is also a a seat stone back there. I don't know what that. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. But just it's it's back there. That's all you need to know. Make a note of that. But like, I don't, I don't know. Even by this game standards, that felt like a really arbitrary, off, like little side area. Also, Moogle Puppet? Is that a trinket or is that an actual equipable thing? No, that's a trinket that you can dump into custom into uh item crafting. Cool. Such is the fate of many interesting sounding items in this game. Oh hey, Seath. Yeah. So these um if you remember the Taxim from Padra, these are their big brothers. So, 
big and wing hits kind of hard. Big old bucket of health. Right idea? That's a good starting point. Said it, it's weak to get it. Yeah, it's weak to all elements. Resistant to uh, physical attacks, so magic is the way to go here. And uh, he will actively throw ruins and shit at you. They do less damage than him punching you, so... Wow, he got up to 350% real fast. Yeah... These guys are really not threats on their own. They're extremely easy to kill. Well, I guess this guy is just here as a prelude, then. He tried to use Whale. To this day, I have absolutely no idea what the fuck Whale does, because every single one of them that tried it, I killed. Good to know. Alright then, so I'm guessing these guys are going to very quickly start showing up in pairs. Nope. No? Huh. Well, so what the hell was that sound? You'll see. That'll that'll be coming into focus right around the corner here. Sounds like a sort of vague, generic idea of sort of video game magic crystally sound. I, I don't know. Oh, huh. There he is. So this guy is the biggest asshole of them all. Oh god, I suddenly remembered everything about this guy. So this is Vitala. Um... I had forgotten! <laughs> okay, so the first thing he'll do is he'll throw up that barrier. As long as that barrier is up, he is absolutely immune to physical attacks, and he takes half damage from all elements. When it comes down, he will return to normal on those, but he will always be resistant to magic. So, of course, you'll stagger him, and then all of your attacks will still do nothing because you're not hitting him with physical attacks. And I can't help but notice that he started using some quite powerful magic on your guys while staggered. Yes. Well, he's, he does not give a fuck about being staggered. He will continue to do whatever the hell he wants. Guessing you can't launch him? No. And, oh, come on, he put up the barrier while staggered. Yep. What the whole, what the whole point of him being staggered is supposed to get the barrier. So basically, he's a massive slog. Yeah. Also, for good measure, multicast will cast two spells in a row. It's usually two auras, or I believe deep, deep shell and poison. Fun times. So, uh, here we got one more gate. But this one has nothing. Uh. Now, the path clearly continues past it, but I'm not sure how to open it. I think it might be connected to the uh, Seath Stone on the other side, but I don't know. It just seems like the kind of game that would do arbitrary stuff, like make gates open only for a hunt. Well, it's what it probably is, is it's... Oh. Well, shit. 